Eric Harris, Dylan Roof, Adam Lanza, James Holmes, Christopher Pittman, Patrick Purdy, Bradley Stone, Staff Sergeant Robert Bales, Andrea Yates, a German Wings co-pilot, a terrorist. Disturbingly, it's very easy for me to understand why each commit the horrific murders they did. In 2001, it just as easily could have been me committing similar acts of terror. I am not an activist for gun control, but I'm certainly not one to believe that citizens, or even police officers, should have mass killing military semi-automatic assault weapons, or worse. I understand our Second Amendment right. I fully respect the Second Amendment right. But myself? I no longer have a Second Amendment right. But what I do have is experience. For over 18 years now, I have had the great honor and good fortune of traveling around the world for business. This is some of my magnet collection. I've traveled to over 60 countries. I can say with certainty, it really is a small world after all, and a beautiful one at that. to the current state of mass violence and terrorism, they're saying if you see something, say something. Report suspicious behavior. Well, I've been reporting suspicious behavior about the escalation of mass violence and radicalized terrorist minds for nearly 14 years to deaf political ears. The world can no longer afford to wait. On December 13, 2006, I testified at the FDA Psychopharmacologic Advisory Committee hearing in Washington, D.C. My testimony went, I would like to thank myself for the miracle of my being here today. In 2001, healthy, 31, and with no troubled history, I went to a doctor concerned about pain in my finger. Finding nothing broken, his diagnosis was anxiety. He prescribed an SSRI for one year. Upon intake, I became high. High developed into euphoria. Euphoria intensified to grandiose until mania overtook me. I lived delusions, paranoia, insomnia, endured radical, obsessive, irrational antics, flying on crazy, oblivious, other people noticed. Within weeks, having lost 22 pounds, I was taken into police custody after running and screaming through the neighborhood. I kicked out the police car window barefoot, then dove through the shattered glass. The emergency room described impaired, disheveled, impulsive, combative, threatening, depersonalization, derealization, acute psychosis. Held in four-point restraints, I was committed to a mental crisis facility. Days after my release, law enforcement came again when I myself called 911 12 times repeatedly. Police arrived to find me locked in the house, razor in hand, screaming to kill myself while begging to police to do it for me. I was forced into total appendage restraint position. Again, I was committed to a mental crisis facility for suicidal ideation. My words on an antidepressant, I will sacrifice my living breath and return to the sea of my mother earth, drown, car off bridge, Drugs, death. Prescription suicide is simple. A delusion manifested to actualize and escape from madness. Optimum, because induced insanity is so horrific that living as such is more petrifying than death itself. Comparatively, a relief. Make no medicinal mistake. SSRIs are hardcore, mind-altering, legal drugs overprescribed, addictive, and deadly. Unlike illegal drugs, however, prescription high does not subside. Rather, it swells higher to toxic levels, 
masking itself in diagnosis while deflecting culpability. To end it, withdrawal, suicide. Victimized, I filed a lawsuit against a pharmaceutical manufacturer mass marketing such a treatment knowingly criminally failing to warn doctors, patients, and the FDA of lethal consequence and poor efficacy. Offered a settlement and gag order, I am able to speak today because I rejected that proposal. My case continues onward. I stand before you, the powers that be, giving you my experience. Now alerted and informed, I trust the policies you produce will be epic. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Many people testified that day. A few survivors. Many were the loved ones of those who did not survive. At the end of the day, the FDA decided to add the words young adults into their commercial advertisement warnings for psychotropic drugs. Keep in mind that anybody taking psychotropic pills is just one side effect away from losing their Second Amendment right, too. In the 1990s, after Spud McKenzie and Joe Camel were banished from advertising due to potentially dangerous marketing to children, the United States became the only country to advertise pharmaceutical drugs, many of them with warnings including aggression, agitation, hallucinations, changes in thoughts, moods, or behaviors, and suicidal thoughts or actions. More warnings include homicidal ideation effect, paranoia, insomnia, mania, psychosis, and even religious preoccupation. Elvis, Michael Jackson, Anna Nicole Smith, Robin Williams, Heath Ledger. Even more, mind-altering psychotropic drugs are being prescribed off-label at any expense to infants, children, teens, young adults, grown adults, seniors, military veterans, police officers, and even pets. Please beware of the dog on Xanax as he may aggressively react much like the psychotropic medicated monkey Travis. Due to the FDA incompetence and political inaction regarding drug safety and advertising, we got a bonus, a heroin crisis. How high will the world go to get so low? Pharmaceutical drugs are now topping the nation's cause of death list. Drug-free school zone is an oxymoron. American doctors have been reduced to drug dealers, receiving kickbacks from pharmaceutical sales reps. Medicare and Medicaid are paying out billions of tax dollars for deadly pharmaceutical mental health drugs under the guise of treatment. People are pharmacy hopping without any red flags or means of prevention. Personalities, emotions are consistently being labeled as disorders. Childhood deemed a malfunction. Mental health treatment pills often mandated, court ordered with prescriptions that kill. The more mental health treatment is prescribed, the more violent occurrences increase. Rest assured, I am not without empathy toward depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, or attention deficits. Goodness knows I've had my share. However, a challenge does not make a disorder. There are many safe, healthy, and natural alternatives to feeling better, happier, without the risk of drug effects. Too many horror stories restricted to silence, cleverly wrapped into an advertised side effect warning relegated to being disregarded, ultimately dismissed. It's long overdue to end direct-to-consumer advertising of pharmaceutical drugs. Anybody taking pharmaceutical medication should have and refer to the Physician's Desk Reference, the medical industry book with complete information on all drug effects. It can save your life. We fail the responsibility of combined intelligence connecting dots between mass shootings, mass murders, suicides, and pharmaceutical psychotropic drugs. Surely prospects are bleak in preventing the next tragedy, be that from a medicated individual in our communities, homes, schools, prisons, mental health care institutions, or even a radical jihad group. Take my flag, my gun, my religion, my freedom, but please don't take my pills. That alone is our prescription for terror. No sooner than we fly our flag, we lower half staff again. As I travel the globe, I recognize the world is not perfect. That would be boring. Rather, it rotates slightly off axle, but with perfect balance. In order to secure safe, healthy, and prosperous New Year's to come, 
May each of us take a moment and be reminded of our common aspirations, and may we strive for a time when every life knows joy, hope, love, and peace. And that's my two cents.